All right, here we go, guys. And as you can see, we have a drizzly, windy, can't see the wind yet, but uh, gusts in the mid 30s today, out of the east. Uh, gonna be like that all weekend. Again, Murphy's Law, just terrible weather on the weekend. We had relatively good weather all week. So we're gonna do a boats by the side of the road video. My buddy Dale sent me a message on Instagram again. Follow me on Instagram, link in the description. I will follow you back. That he found a Grady White uh, somewhere in Southhold. We're leaving Mattatuck right now, about to enter Kutchog. We're in the North Fork of Long Island, heading east. And I found a boat here on this road at good old reliable Chuck's Fiberglass, a really cheap boat. Uh, it's one of those boats that you might wind up putting 10 times what the listed price is, depending on what may or may not be wrong with it. We'll check it out. Uh, then we'll check out that Grady that uh, Dale sent me. And then we found that yellow pang. I was on the wrong road. Uh, third time it's mentioned on this video or in this series. Second time it's being reviewed. Uh, it's actually on the North Road in South Hold also, not far from uh, the Grady White we're going to look at. And there's another boat next to it, which we'll check out too. So hopefully we get four boats in today. And yeah, we'll go from there. We'll, we'll see the prices and... We'll see if uh, what you guys think of these boats, whether there are, any of them are worth the price. Right, we are in Kachog for that first boat, which is, if memory serves me right, looks like a cabin cruiser. I think the price was 1800 But again, uh, as we'll talk about when we get there, cabin cruisers, inboard, outboard, so many things that could need work and at that price I'm presuming something is not working mechanically whether it's the inboard out outboard uh, the, the engine itself which is typically a marinized car engine or the outdrive or one of the many components that inboard outboards have bellows elbows etc I am not an expert on these but the reason I said it could cost ten times as much because Let's just say the boat was structurally sound, and, and, and here we're going to be on it in a second. If it did need a new engine, a new outdrive, you're, you're, you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars. So there it is. It's the second boat here. That wasn't here yesterday when I drove by. 1900, not 1800. 1900. Let's check it out. And let's see what the story is with that second boat. All right, we're here, and for all of you complaining about the audio, I've got a new mic. This is like the fifth friggin' mic I've bought. This is uh, a Rode single-channel wireless, so hopefully you're hearing it on both speakers. Got a windsock on it, too, to help with the wind. I'll be curious to see how this audio comes out. Again, uh, hard to tell right here, but it is uh, It's pretty windy, wind coming out of the east. This is a Wellcraft or Proline walk around. I don't think it's for sale. This might be, it looks like it had a, looks really nice actually. Like the Chucks might've done some fiberglass work on it. Uh, PLO Proline, that would be a Proline. Outdrive empty. Yeah, this is probably a customer's boat that these guys worked on. No for sale sign on it. Cool boat. Uh, but here's a Sea Ray, an old Sea Ray. Let's see if it has a hint and if we can tell the year. It is an 86 Sea Ray, 1900. There's the Merc Cruiser Outdrive. Looks like it's seen better days, but it's all there. The rams are there, they're up, so clearly that's working. There's a transducer, two trim tabs. Pretty aggressive V on this. It's uh, uh, for sale. There's the number. Speedos 631-912-7312 or 19. Uh, yeah, 1900. It is, uh, it looks like that says Seville. Somebody who knows Sea Rays better may know. I'm taking a page out of Cadillac if it is a Seville. 912-7312. No info on how it's riding. Uh, was registered at least through 23, I believe these last three years in New York. So, you know, 20, it could have been in the water. Uh, could have been in the water through, through last year for all I know. Um, 
but you can see it does have a cabin. This is very typical of 80s style boats. Uh, cabin, looks like a trailer too. Doesn't say whether the trailer is included, but it's a dual axle trailer. You know, if I had to guess, I would say 21, 22 feet on this. Uh, we'll extend the GoPro and give you guys an inside shot since I can't reach up. Looks like the door is missing from what I can see from my vantage point here uh, for the cabin. There's the driving station, not sure about any electronics, couple chairs, little bimini, big light up here. Yeah, this would be, I think, a project, even if the engine was functional. Uh, I mean, it is on a trailer. If you had space to store it and you just wanted to get out on the water and presuming everything was working, I'm not gonna call Spiros, I have no idea who he is, and ask, but, you know, you could do worse than this. You really could. We once showed, uh, we once did a, a video with these boats, a couple times actually, where clearly, clearly, they were gone beyond belief and needed a lot of work. This certainly isn't that. Um, and again, if it's here, I presume they did some kind of work here, this company here, Chuck's Fiberglass. All right, let's go find the next ones. Right, we're on Horton's Lane in South Hole. This is where, where Dale told me that uh, Grady is, and I think I see it up there on the left. Uh, so Horton's Lane is actually, if you take this to the end, we're heading north right now, you hit Horton's Lighthouse, uh, historic lighthouse here in South Hold, overlooking the Long Island Sound. That light you see all the way in the distance is Highway 48. And here's the Grady, he was not, Dale, you did me right. Thank you, buddy. Let's just hope it's for sale and not somebody's boat. Uh, let's see, let's see, nice house here. Yeah, it is for sale. All right, we'll pull into the driveway here and take a quick peek. Another inboard outboard, moon shadow. All right, let's see what we got. All right, here is the stern of the boat. Looks like it's in really good shape. Let's see if we can tell the year. Service by Albertsons, that's a good sign. Uh, there's the hint, it's an 85. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell that. 85. So the last two digits on that hint tell you the year, inboard out drive. Again, this one looks in better shape than that first boat we saw. Little swim ladder here, time to extend the GoPro a little. Here's the side profile. It's an Offshore 24, model they made for many years, very popular in the 80s. It's got a nice cabin in it, probably has a lot of fishing room. Again, I can't, let me see if I can step on one of the tires. Yeah, there we go. There's the uh, engine box right there, some rod holders there. Live well there, it looks like it's got a slide-in thing for a cutting board probably. Two-passenger steering, there's your binnacle, there's an older Furuno system. Couple boxes here, you could storage, put storage in there or you know keep things in there or use them as a cooler fish box. The under gunnel rod storage, very popular. You don't see it quite as much now. Um, you could stick three rods in there, probably have it on this side too, we're not gonna check. Let's see if there's a price. The for sale sign's on the other side. Step off. We're not gonna go inside. Let's see if we can tell. Yeah, so this is good through next year, so they probably had it in the water fairly recently, is my presumption. And here's the for sale sign. And there is a price. 6300 firm, trailer included, runs electronics work. Hey, not a bad deal. 6300 runs and electronics work. Grady White Offshore. These are really solid boats. Not a big fan of these, uh, you know, plastic uh, through hull fittings here instead of the bronze ones, but you could always change those out. That's not a big deal or just keep them, you know, it's, it's a old boat, you see some gouges, uh, but man, <laughs> it feels rock solid. It looks rock solid. Service by Albertsons, they service my boat. I trust these guys. Uh, that's a good sign too. You could always check in with them on this. 
And yeah, I mean, if that description is true, that it runs and the electronics work, nice hardtop on it too, got radar on it too, so 6300 not a bad price. I like this one. All right, now let's, let's head up to 48 and check out those, uh, the yellow panga and the boat next to it. All right, we're jumping on Highway 48. We're leaving Horton's Lane where we saw that Grady. And up ahead on the right, there should be two more boats, including that yellow panga. And just a really quick explanation. I screwed up royally last year. The, the yellow panga had some really weird growth on it, like a seaweed growth. And I, I took that uh, to mean the fiberglass, it's so embarrassing, was was coming out and clearly not the case. I caught a lot of flack for that, rightfully so, I might add. And I, somewhere up here, somewhere up here, I know this because directly across the street, there's the yellow peg and there's the blue boat next to it, is uh, La Cascada. And if you guys are ever in the North Fork and you want authentic El Salvadorian food, holy cow, I can't tell you how awesome this food is. Now, where the hell do I park to see this? Do I just park on the street, on the sidewalk? Well, hopefully I don't get a ticket. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, definitely a lot more noise here. This will put the new mic to the test. And here you go, a, a Hurricane SD 235. 300 hours, trailer included, 60 grand. Call Joe, there's the number. Uh, looks like it's in great shape. Easy load trailer. A deck boat, right? Hurricane makes deck boats. They're wide in the front. This, this is a cruising boat. This is if you, you want to take the family out. And hey, it's got a 175 Yamaha four-stroke four-blade prop. That's nice. Uh, four-blade stainless steel. Black paint threw me off. I thought, oh, actually, I, I shouldn't be so Quicksilver Nemesis. We will take a quick look at that, see if it's aluminum or stainless steel. Uh, some sea deck material here. It's covered, so you can't see the inside. But brand new 23 footer. If maybe fishing is not your primary goal, this would be a good deal. It is bottom painted. If you wanted to keep it in a marina, you could. And uh, if you wanted to save money on the exorbitant dock fees that they're charging now, uh, certainly you could trailer this with a, with a half ton pickup. Bimini that extends over. Again, nice, nice cover on it right now. I'll, I'll try and get some interior shots maybe off the internet, give you guys an idea of what this looks like inside. But it looks like it's well taken care of and maybe we can did it have the year i think it did have the year and i'm just getting old and don't remember i like this too recess boarding ladder this pops up you drop the boarding ladder if you want to go swimming let's see no it didn't have the year so i'm not that crazy but we can find the year hopefully hopefully where is the hin on this the hin might be under that pad all right, you don't see the hen. It's probably back here somewhere. I don't want to start unsnapping things. Um, definitely not here where I would normally find it. But let's, let's revisit an old friend. And hey, all the exposed fiberglass is gone, which was never exposed fiberglass. Panga style of boats that was very popular. In, the, in Central America, South America, originally made out of big logs, and that's why they have this really narrow and long profile. I mean, there is a lot of fishing room back here, but it's just not wide. This thing, I mean, you can just see on the trailer how, uh, th this is probably seven feet wide if I had to guess. Um, ETEC 135 on it. It is a 2017, and the price was in the 30s last time, which is not a bad price for a, a really cool boat. Uh, is there a price on it this time? Is it sold maybe? And now, 
Well, there's a for sale sign here. I wonder if that's for this boat. It probably, um, 609. It might be for that boat, unless the owner owns both. Um, okay. So after all that, I don't even know if this boat is for sale, but, but it is a really cool boat. You see a couple storage boxes up here, anchor locker up there, little seat over here, life jacket storage up there, radio box up there, electronics box, storage under this seat, storage in there. And yeah, just a very otherwise, despite all the storage, utilitarian boat, this would be a fishing boat. This is something you could take out to the bay, no problem. You could take this out into the ocean on a calm day. Uh, again, last year it was in the low 30s from what I recall. And in 2023, for a relatively newer boat, albeit, you know, could use a little detail and clean up, um, pretty good deal pretty good deal and don't let this engine scare you a lot of people hate on the Evan Roots. they're out of business but uh, they're very reliable engines Skinner had a smaller one for years on his boat I have a couple friends that owned them um, relatively reliable and a lot of power typically less weight than a four-stroke it's got a Solus prop on it that's a good sign somebody invested some money in an aftermarket prop and uh, that's cool too. Five rod holders up there, little Christmas tree type setup. There's the antenna. Looks like the uh, tip came off. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's jump back in the truck. By the way, there is the restaurant I was talking about right across the street, Restaurante Hispano La Cascada Inc. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna show up on the GoPro. It's right next to the Chinese food sign. Yeah, just an amazing restaurant, fresh food. Like they, you see them peeling the shrimp. Um, and there's a team of older El Salvadorian women <laughs> cooking the food in the back. I would highly recommend. It's it's typically only locals uh, come here, and locals, I mean, uh, native people of Hispanic descent. It, it, it's rare that uh, you see middle-aged white guys like me in there. But uh, th that should be a sign how good the food is. And it really is. All right, we'll get back in the truck and I'll give you my uh, thoughts on these boats. All right, we're back on the road heading home. And although I am not a fan of inboard outboards, I would probably pick that Grady, even though it's, you know, 38 years old at this point. It's still a Grady. Looks like it's in good shape. I would obviously have somebody uh, more concerned on that one about the structural integrity of the boat than the engine. The owner did say in the ad it, it runs and drives um, and the electronics work. I, I think you could get into that boat cheap and enjoy it, and it's really not a lot of money if, if something did go wrong. Uh, I do like that Panga, but I don't know now if it's for sale. I didn't see a for sale sign on it. Uh, that $1,900 boat is interesting. Uh, the fact that it's at Chuck's, which is a fiberglass repair shop here in Long Island, leads me to believe they did do some work on it, which is a good thing. But the fact that there's no mention of the engine working, the outdrive working, uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, that, that one I might focus more on the mechanical components if I were thinking about buying it. But if it did run, again, not a bad price on a trailerable boat if you just want to get on the water. Uh, not a lot of like decent late model fishing boats for sale right now. We, we've seen much more of those in the past. And my presumption is with the price of new boats still being relatively uh, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, that people that have them know what they have and they're not going to put those up for sale. They are going to hold on to them because the price of replacing them is just too exorbitant. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments, which of these boats you would pick or and why. And I'm presuming most of you, if you did comment, would say none, but that's okay. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.